हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ड क्वेश्चन इन ओरल्स ऑन क्रैंक शाफ्ट फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज क्रैंक शाफ्ट सेकेंड क्वेश्चन कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ क्रैंक शाफ्ट थर्ड क्वेश्चन मटीरियल ऑफ क्रैंक शाफ्ट फोर्थ क्वेश्चन स्ट्रेसेस एक्टिंग ऑन क्रैंक शाफ्ट फिफ्थ क्वेश्चन वॉट इज कैम टू क्रैंक शाफ्ट रेशियो एंड स्पीड सिक्स क्वेश्चन टाइप्स ऑफ क्रैंक शाफ्ट सेवन क्वेश्चन रीजन फॉर क्रैंक शाफ्ट डिफ्लेक्शन एथ क्वेश्चन सेफ्टीज बिफोर टेकिंग क्रैंक शाफ्ट डिफ्लेक्शन नाइन्थ क्वेश्चन हाउ टू टेक क्रैंक शाफ्ट डिफ्लेक्शन टेंथ क्वेश्चन वाई वी आर नॉट टेकिंग डिफ्लेक्शन एट बी डी सी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉट इज क्रैंक शाफ्ट क्रैंक शाफ्ट कन्वर्ट्स पिस्टन अप एंड डाउन मोशन टू ए रोटरी मोशन इट ट्रांसमिट्स द पावर टू द प्रोपेलर और द फ्लाई व्हील इट ड्राइव द सिस्टम वाया गेयर्स और चेन्स सेकेंड क्वेश्चन कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ क्रैंक शाफ्ट क्रैंक शाफ्ट कंसिस्ट ऑफ क्रैंक वेब्स क्रैंक पिन एंड मेन जर्नल्स इट इज बैलेंसड विथ काउंटर वेट्स सपोर्टेड बाय मेन बेरिंग्स थर्ड क्वेश्चन वॉट आर द मटेरियल्स ऑफ क्रैंक शाफ्ट क्रैंक शाफ्ट इज मेड अप ऑफ फोर्ज स्टील और कैस्ट आयरन Fourth question: What are the stresses acting on the crank shaft? Stresses acting on crank shaft. First one: torsional stress. It is due to the twisting motion from the piston firing. It can lead to torsional vibration and fatigue failure. Second one is bending stress. It is caused by the side thrust from the connecting rod. It is highest at crank pin and main general fillets. Third one is shear stress. It is at the crank pin and weight due to the rotational forces fourth one is axial stress it is due to the axial forces from misalignment or propeller thrust fifth one is fatigue stress it comes from continuous cyclic loading or unloading during the engine operation sixth one is thermal stress it is due to the temperature variations during the operation fifth question cam to crankshaft ratio and speed example in four stroke engine crank shaft completes two revolution per cycle crank shaft open or close valves once per cycle so it turns once ratio crank shaft turns two times for every one turn of the cam shaft so, the ratio is 2 is to 1 sixth question types of crank shaft there are four types of crank shafts first one is fully built crank shaft which is used in auxiliary engine second one is semi built crank shaft which is used in main engine third one is welded type crank shaft and fourth one is forged type crank shaft which is used in compressors first one is fully built crank shaft in this all parts are fabricated separately in this process web is heated up to 700 degrees centigrade to increase the size of the hole when the size increases then the crank journal and the crank pin are inserted in it this is very heavy type of crank shaft which is used in auxiliary engine second one semi built crank shaft this type of crank shaft crank pin and crank web are in a single piece and journal is connected to web with help of shrink fit which helps in increase the stroke of the engine where this type of crank shaft are used in main engine third one is welded type crank shaft in this crank shaft crank pin and crank web are both on both sides and half length of the journal at each web are forged or casted separately afterwards it is welded together to form an complete crank shaft and fourth one is fully forged type crank shaft The whole crank shaft is forged to form a single piece. The fully forged crank shaft is used in compressors. Seventh question: Reasons for crank shaft deflection. Reasons for taking crank shaft deflection. First one: To check the performance of the main engine. Second one: To check the alignment of the shaft. Third one: To check the bearing conditions. Fourth one: To check the misalignment of main bearing when to take crank shaft deflection when the major structure get disturbed such as fire breakout or grounding or collision 
before and after dry dock after main bearing overhauling initial installation after 1000 hours when the foundation chokes are repaired or renewed when bearing temperature increases eighth one safety is before taking crankshaft deflection safety is taken first one is propeller clearance second one smooth weather third one even keel fourth one turning gear engaged fifth one indicator cock to be open sixth one error free dial gauge seventh one no loading and discharging ninth one how to take crankshaft deflection crankshaft deflections are measured by using a deflection gauge the deflection gauge is a dial gauge which measures the distance between adjacent webs spread at different angular positions of the shaft the dial gauge shows the distance up to which the stylus moves when it is pressed. Fit the dial gauge between the punch marks of adjacent webs opposite to crank pin. Ensure that it is at half of the diameter from shaft center to press the stylus 3 mm. The clockwise rotation of the needle indicates closing of the webs. The corresponding gauge reading is taken as negative value. Anti-clockwise rotation indicates opening of the webs. The corresponding gauge reading is taken as positive value. Take the first measurement when the engine is at 30 degrees after the bottom dead center position. Keep the gauge close to the side of the connecting rod. Set the gauge to zero at this position. Rotate the engine by the turning gear. Stop at each quarter and take the gauge reading using a mirror with flexible handle. Take the final reading near bottom dead center. The connection rod is now at a position opposite to the first reading. Take the average of the first and last reading to get the approximate bottom position. Tenth question. Why we are not taking deflection at BDC? At the BDC position, it is not possible to take crankshaft deflection as connecting rod will hinder in between. Hence, we are taking reading on two more sides. One BDC at port, other one BDC at starboard. We can use the formula for finding the BDC. BDC equals to port BDC plus starboard BDC dividing by 2. With this, we can find the BDC. Thanks for watching. For more videos, don't forget to subscribe.